Okay, we're starting off in your most comfortable laying down position. So come on down and spread your whole entire back out on the floor. Let's take a few minutes, okay? I like to spend about five minutes in the beginning of each practice, grounding and being still. Prioritizing really big breath here. And just allowing yourself to settle in can actually make such a big difference. So why not take a little time? Breathing through your nose as best you can. See about maybe lengthening the breath. One second on the inhale. Lengthen it another second or two on the exhale. Keep this long, slow breath going. I want you to just relax your shoulders. See if you want to tuck your shoulder blades underneath your heart. I like to kind of scoop them under my rib cage. And then try this. Try a little bit of a bend in your elbows and letting the hands fall out to the side. Palm up. Maybe that gives you a little more freedom in your chest as your shoulders externally rotate. Feel the big expansive rib cage on the inhale. Let the belly puff open too. Make a big Buddha belly on your inhale. And with your exhale, wrap all the tissue of your torso inward towards center. Could you squeeze every bit of air out? Maybe try out a little bend in your knees. I like to keep a little bend in the knees to give the low back time to release toward the floor. Continue to breathe here, still settling in. Begin to really watch your body and your mind here. Now that you've really tuned into your breath, Keep that breath flowing, stay with it, stay aware. And also watch your body, okay? Maybe relaxing a little bit. Feel your hips, maybe softening. Feel all the little spaces between your ribs, letting go. Any tension in your belly, your low back, your face. How's your jaw? Do you need to just relax your jaw for a little while? Let it hang open. Your back teeth are not touching anymore. Let's draw the awareness even further inward. Okay, we've washed the breath. We've let the body release. Let's watch the thoughts for a little while. So we have this wonderful luxury in a yoga practice where we can step back and observe ourselves. We can observe with amusement and compassion, watching the thoughts. And you can do this without getting taken for a ride, can't you? You can just say, oh, there's a thought and come back to watching your breath. All right, keep your big breath moving, okay? Getting big on your inhales. Compressing to be infinitely dense on your exhales. Let's bring in some movement to the lower body. So if your elbows are bent 
really start to press them into the floor, okay? If they're not, maybe consider a little bend in the elbows and then see how it feels here to just press down into the floor, activating your upper body. So you feel hopefully some strength in your shoulder blades, some little bit of uh, strength in your back maybe, but keep your belly button pulling downward here. We're gonna take the feet wide away from each other and start to drop the knees side to side. So I like to call this windshield wipers. And take it really nice and slow at first. Really no rush. Feel free to just close your eyes while you do this. Okay, at first this might be really passive. You're kind of just letting gravity pull your knees down to either side, hover. As you press your upper body slightly down into the floor. So maybe this begins to get a little bit warmer. This movement kind of loosens up and maybe you start to want to press your knees a little more downward toward the floor. And you'll feel this a little more in your inner hip and your outer hip on both sides. And we want to activate the glutes maybe, get a little glute activation in there just to make the most of it. Let's take a few more rounds like this, okay? Notice your low back is getting a great massage. It's waking up your lower body. Okay, you're coming back through center now. Pause here and pick your feet up. Bring your knees and your legs right together. We wanna keep a little 90 degree-ish kind of bend here. Keep that low back strong by pulling the belly button inward towards your spine. So your core is active here, okay? Keep your upper body pressing against the floor and we'll start to hover the knees on one side. Keep strong legs, strong core. Bring them back to center. Keep breathing, hover to one side. Bring it back to center. So we've taken that same twisting movement we were doing before. And we've deepened it a little bit. It's rolling further up your spine now. Okay, keep moving, look away from your knees. I like to exhale to the side and inhale to center. But see what you like, just keep breathing. All right, next time you come through center, pause here. Hands grab your knees, see if you wanna Pull your forehead towards your knees. Lift your upper body off the floor, balancing on your low back here. Keep breathing. How close could you get your knees to your forehead? Keep breathing. Okay, notice how your low back is on the floor here. Try this. Extend just your right leg. Reach it for the front of the mat. Hover it off the ground and bring it back in. Switch sides, extend just the left, hover, bring it back in. Nice, again on the right, bring it back in. On the left, keep breathing, bring it back in, nice. Now you can switch if you like, sending one leg out. As you switch sides, you can switch legs. Pull that leg in. So we're getting your core nice and warm. If you need a break, drop your head and shoulders, okay? Otherwise, Stick with it. Exhale to pull the knee in. Inhale to switch. Exhale. Inhale to switch. Okay. Maybe one more on either side. Next time you grab one, hold it and breathe. Draw your shoulders away from your ears. Point out through all your toes. Breathe. Feel that low back pulling downward toward the ground. Let's switch sides. Hold and breathe. Long spine. Nice little core challenge here. Okay, one more big breath. And let it go. Bend all your knees in. You can go ahead and relax onto the floor. Notice that great warmth in your abs and your core. Okay, let's keep building in that warmth. Tuck your hands behind your knees here. Okay, we're going to play around a little bit. So very playfully, try to rock yourself up and balance on your, on your sitting bones, okay? Tucking your tailbone will be more comfortable. Try it a few times. Rock up and down. Try to balance. Come
come on up. Okay, maybe try it three or four more times. Keep in mind, you can put your fingers and toes down, can't you? And just use them to help you balance. But if you can, challenge yourself to get those toes up off the ground. Okay, let's do it one more time, but this time see if you could hold. So come on up and see if you can hold right here. So you can drop your fingers and toes if you need, no matter what, I want your femurs and your spine in like a sort of a 90 degree angle, maybe slightly more acute than 90 degrees. But breathe here in boat pose, okay, Navasana. Could you make your spine a little longer, okay? For less challenge, drop some hands and feet. For more challenge, let go of your legs, reaching past your feet. Okay, maybe try extending one leg, really reaching out through your toes. Maybe two legs is gonna work today, who knows? But let's take one more big breath in here and let it go. Drop your feet down in front. Okay, if you turn your knees out to one side, we can flip over and I'll meet you on hands and knees. Okay, let's get a wrist stretch while we're here. So if you wanna do one hand at a time, two hands at a time, it's really up to you, but you're gonna flip your palm over so it's facing up, your fingers point at you. And if it's super tender, just do one. But if everything's going okay, do two hands. And you're just gonna roll around on your hand. Make sure it feels nice. I like to move my fingers while I do this, like you're trying to make a fist. So experiment. Uh, some people like to touch the thumb to each finger and that's a fun little movement. And then flip it over, palm down. Let's do some circles. All right, friends, so bring it back in. We'll flip our hands back to normal. And let's do some cat cows. We're really thinking about mobility in the spine here, okay? Using all of the directions your spine can go. So grip the mat strong. Put a lot of mat color between your fingers, big spread out hands. And then pull your elbows inward. So you feel your chest engage. I want you to feel your belly button wrapping in towards your spine, okay? And we'll pull the heart forward. Think of pulling on the mat, extending and arching your spine as you inhale. As you exhale, push the floor away. Think of opening up the back of your rib cage. And we'll do that several more times. Inhale, pull your heart forward, open up the front of the ribs. Exhale, push the floor. So keep this going. And then I kind of want you to experiment with little side to side movements that you mix in there. So maybe you kind of have more of a jump roping kind of movement. So please experiment with that. <laughs> All right, should feel really nice. Cat cows are just a big old massage for your torso. But let's bring it back into a flat back. <laughs> let's get the right leg up and out behind. So pointy toe here. We're bending at that right knee. And I want you to think of pointing your right toe up at the ceiling, okay? At the same time, notice how your right hip kind of wants to lift, okay? Do the opposite, tuck it under so it stays very low and level with the left, okay? And we're just gonna give it little little very small lifts of that right knee. So we're gonna engage your glute here. We're waking up the back of your body. So it's a tiny kind of a subtle movement. Waking up the glute, maybe three more times. Two and one, now hold there. And I want you to keep that glute engaged, okay? Feel that. Just like we did a cat-cow before, keep that strong glute, that right leg bent. Inhale, pull your heart forward. Could you point that toe at the back of your head? And exhale, pull that right knee to your nose. Let's do it again, inhale. Strong glute, point the right toe at the back of your head as your heart rolls forward. Exhale, knee to your nose. Let's do it one more time. Big breath in, pull it up and back. 
Exhale, knee to nose. Now hold it here, hold it here. You have the option to keep that left knee down here, or if you want a little extra spice, you can tuck the left toes, lift the left knee, but either way, hold that right knee to your nose for three, two, and one. Bring it back down to hands and knees, guys. Let's switch sides. So now let's get the, the left knee up and out behind. Same thing. Put some strong internal rotation in the left hip and lift that belly button in towards your spine. We're gonna lift and lower the knee just slightly. So in your mind body map, okay? Your internal body map, find your glute <laughs> and make it warm, make it work. Okay, now lift the knee and hold. Keep the glute on, just like a cat cow. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, knee to nose. Two more times. Inhale, back extension. Exhale, back flexion. One more and let's hold that crunch kind of movement. Okay, so hold this action with the left knee to the nose. Keep the right knee on the ground for less spice. Pick it up for more. Either way, push the floor for three. You two and one. Come on down, hands and knees. All right, tuck your toes here, lift your knees. We're gonna come hands back to feet and just hang for a little while. You might wanna really bend your knees here so that your heart hangs really low. Shake your head out and swing side to side. So notice the backs of your legs. Notice that there's tension in the hamstrings, calves maybe. Just bend it if there is, okay? And do let your head really hang. Shake it, yes and no. We're going to roll up from here. So as you're ready, inhale, push into your heels, okay? Think of stacking yourself up bone by bone. Lift that heart. And with your exhale, drop it into a chair squat. You're gonna drop down nice and low. And we're gonna hold right here in this chair squat. So feel free to step your feet maybe a little closer together, okay? I like to put my big toes touching and a little space between the heels. So you see what works for you. But we wanna drop that tailbone as we pull the belly button into the spine. Is it challenging? It sure is, but you can do it. If it's too much, lift your hips. If you like the challenge, drop your hips. We're gonna hold and breathe here. So I want you to put a little engagement between your knees, like you're trying to hold a piece of paper between them. Let your legs get warm and peel your chest up and open. Okay, I like to think of holding a basketball up overhead and then trying to move the basketball a little further back here. So feel your chest and shoulders working, your legs getting warm. For this last breath, I maybe wanna challenge you to drop your hips a few inches. Getting the legs warm, okay? As you're ready, come on up and out. Whew. All right, shake it off. So let's just step one foot forward. So just step forward. I want you to come sideways on your mat. So you have lateral space rather than frontal space. Okay, so arms out wide. Pick up your toes and point them out away from each other. And then turn them inward. And let's see if we could just kind of playfully turn on the heels. Toes turn out. Toes turn in. <laughs> Try it a few times. Turn out. Turn in. Notice how the hips feel and what's actually happening in your bones and your muscles. Okay, next time they turn out, your toes turn out, your heels are in, go ahead and drop your hips nice and low. So imagine you could bring them level with your knees. That's kind of where we want to be. Here we are in horse posture. So um, because we are working on splits today, we want to get the legs really nice and warm in all directions. So if you need a little break, you can lift your hips, but if everything's going great, hold here with me and just breathe. Let's play around while we're here. Okay, give us something to do. 
How about keeping everything as crisp and isolated as you can? What if you could lift that left heel up off the floor and drop your hips a little bit in that direction? Okay, notice what's going on in the left leg. Let's drop the left heel carefully. Lift the right heel. Could you shift your hips a little bit in that direction? <laughs> okay, carefully drop the right heel. Now here's a challenge. Try to lift both heels. Carefully drop the hips a little lower. <laughs> One more big breath in here. And let it go. Drop the heels here. Whew. You can use your hands. Press yourself back up. Horse posture. Powerful stuff for your lower body, okay? Let's pick up those heels. Turn them inward. Grab onto your hips and fold yourself in half. Come on down. Drop your hands under your shoulders. And if it's hard to get your palms to the ground and you feel like you have to kind of scramble for the ground, just bend your knees or adjust where your feet are. You can take them wider, anything you need, narrower. But get really comfortable here. Starting to feel maybe some nice opening in the backs of the legs, the insides of the legs after that horse posture. And then we're gonna start to bend in the knees to one side and to the other. So feeling some really nice warmth in the legs allows them to open up more readily. So great hip opening here. Okay, so next time you come back to center, let's pause here. I'm just gonna have you walk your hands back between your feet and really enjoy this wide leg forward fold by letting your head hang down and point straight at the center of the earth. Okay, so just enjoy it. Turn those toes a little bit in, rock the weight into the outer edges of your feet and maybe even lift your toes. Okay, if you, like me, find that your head is touching the floor, bring the feet in a little closer. Okay, and make it so that your head hangs just about an inch off the floor. You can really let that neck let go. All right, shaking your head, yes and no. If you're feeling pretty good here, you can walk your hands back a little further so your fingers are still pointing in the same direction as your toes and point your head even further downward. Maybe one more breath in this really nice forward fold. Okay. Bring the hands back up in front. Okay, from here, uh, bend into your left knee. Sorry, your left knee. <laughs> and point the left toes out to the left. Okay, walk your hands over to the left. We are now in a little lunge. So in your lunge, remember you can drop the back knee at any time. Okay, not, not a problem at all. Just drop the back knee. Okay, we're going to shift the hips forward and then pull them back few times. Hips forward, hips back. And take a few more like this. I just want you to find some nice movement across the back of the left leg and the front of the right. Okay, next time you come forward into that lunge, let's hold there for a little bit. Now, if you have your back knee down, you can keep it down, okay? But using your left leg, press yourself up to a lunge. So right knee can be up or down. Once you're in your lunge, arms up overhead. Take a big breath in. Okay, as you exhale, drop that back knee almost to the floor. I want you to just hover. Nice. Inhale, bring that back knee up. Exhale, back knee to the floor. We're gonna do it one more time, okay? Inhale, lift, and exhale, back knee lowers. Okay, hold it right here. Okay, 
Maybe one more big breath in right here. And then exhale, hands down underneath your shoulders. So now, if you had that back knee up, this is an, a good time to drop it now and just kind of sink into the right hip. So let's take a few breaths here. Okay, we got the legs nice and warm. So you can imagine a little bit of activity in the legs, like you're trying to push the floor away slightly. So slightly push the floor away with your legs. Do your best to keep that spine nice and long. Okay, so this might be quite enough if you just wanna hang right here. But if you're feeling pretty good about this lunge and you'd like to move a little more deeply into it to open up your hips, your low back, okay? Maybe you're working towards splits. Then start to pull that left knee inward towards your left armpit. So you're trying to squish your left knee onto the outside of your left shoulder, okay? So it's engaging. You're engaged in that direction. And then maybe you drop to one elbow or two. Okay, keep some activity in the legs. So don't let them fall asleep. <laughs> don't let them clock off. If you wanna drop your head, go for it. Let it hang, shake it out. But just keep the neck really long if you do that. All right, your lizard lunge. So from your lizard lunge, feel free to hang here and just continue to enjoy it. Or I'm gonna give you the option, whether you have the right hand or the right elbow on the floor, look over to the left and reach your left hand behind your back in the direction of your right foot. Now see if you could bend that right knee and grab your right foot with your left hand, okay? Some days it works, some days it doesn't work. So uh, no problem if it doesn't, maybe you're just reaching today. And that's great. But if you can get that foot and you can roll around on the lower edge of the right quadricep, kind of where the fibers meet your kneecap, that's a really nice, really nice massage for that overworked quadriceps muscles. So whatever variation of this lizard lunge you are in, Enjoy another really long, solid, big breath. And then release that right foot, if you had it. Back up on your hands, tuck that uh, right toe and lift the right knee. And if we ground that left toe and just point it to the left, we're walking hands to your center and we're heading over to the other side. So bend into your right knee. Point the right toes to the right. Walk your hands to the right. So we're in another lunge on this side. We're gonna mirror what we just did. So if you wanna drop the back knee, go for it. The left knee can come down. We'll start to rock the hips forward and back. Notice the back of the right leg and the front of the left. What's going on there? Keep that engagement, that slight engagement against the floor, pushing away. So coming into that lunge, we'll find a spot that we can hold, okay? Use that right knee and come on up to your lunge. Right, remember the back knee can come down. Otherwise, we're gonna keep the legs really strong, resisting the floor. Strong glutes, okay, belly button in. And let's hover the back knee just off the floor. And inhale, pick it up. Again, big exhale, knee down. Inhale, pick it up. So we're getting it nice and warm. One more time and hold this one. So keep resisting the floor as you hover. Feel the left leg nice and warm. All right, one more really big breath in here, getting really super warm. And we're letting it go. So drop the back knee, drop your hands down in front, and we'll settle into a lizard lunge on this side. So same thing as the other side. 
Take your time just grounding through your legs when you come down. So don't feel like you have to rush into the deepest expression of the posture at any time. You have so much time. You can start to press that right knee inward towards your right armpit, like you're trying to push yourself <laughs> with your right knee. Maybe one elbow or two. Okay, and no matter what, if you wanna round your spine, hang your head, okay, that's fine, but keep the spine long. So you're kind of acknowledging that it's rounding, but you're lengthening it at the same time. And breathe. See if you can let your head just hang. Notice if you're holding tension in your jaw here. This is a nice posture to kind of find that perfect equilibrium. Just how much do I have to work here and no more? <laughs> so feel free to stay in this lovely lizard lunge or I can offer you that same quad stretch on the left side. So if you look over to the right and reach behind you, you might bend that left knee and see if you could trap your foot, okay? If you can trap it, try rolling around oh, on the top of your quadriceps on the left, on that just above the kneecap. Okay, if you're a runner or a cyclist, um, or maybe just a human, this is always a tender place for a lot of us. All right, friends, as you're ready, start to slowly back yourself up and out of this, kind of in the way you came in. Okay, and then we'll come back to that forward fold back to the center. So we can walk our hands back to center. Okay, again, take a forward fold with the toes pointed inward and just hang. Okay, but this time, maybe instead of focusing on that sensation of letting the upper body hang, what if we focus instead on the sensations on the inner thighs and the backs of the thighs? So if you feel good about it, you can start to walk your feet out away from each other. And supporting yourself with your hands is important here. And not going too far is important as well, but just go where you wanna go with it. Okay, remember not to lock your knees, keep a softness in them, please. And uh, feel free to take maybe three or four more long, slow breaths wherever you want to be. Okay, you can point your toes out to the side if that's more appropriate. Maybe coming down to your elbows. Okay, everyone's going to be different here and every day is different. So don't ever worry about feeling like, oh, I wish I could go further. <laughs> it's okay, it's coming. Just keep doing it. All right, maybe one more breath here. Your feet nice and wide. You're feeling good strength across the back body and some great release across the hips. Start to back yourself up. You can shimmy your feet back in. Okay, bring your feet all the way back together. Come all the way back to center. Okay, and just fold here. You can really bend your knees, grab the backs of your, your legs. Just hang and swing. All right, from here, palms down on the ground, just underneath your shoulders. And you can turn, um, long ways on your mat again, so that the, there's more space in front and in back of you rather than side to side. So turn back uh, front to back, okay? And from here, so from your hands and knee, from your, uh, from your hands on the ground with your knees bent, I just want you to pick up your right leg and send it up and out behind you. So it's out there in space. And I want you to know that you can bend your left knee as much or as little as you want at any time. So you're just kind of standing on your left leg here. 
Take a moment to level your hips off so that the right hip is slightly internally rotating and then strengthen out through the right leg. So make the right leg as strong and long as you can. I like to think of pushing out through the bones but pulling back through the muscles, okay? And the left leg is also strong but you can cultivate a bend in the knee, okay? So your head is hanging and you're sending that right leg up and out behind. Shake your head. And breathe. We'll spend a little more time here. Okay. So try this. Here's an experiment. How about grabbing one, uh, one hand onto your left ankle? Just try one hand. And then maybe you come up on the fingertips of the other hand. Maybe one by one you lift the fingertips. And maybe both hands grab onto the left ankle. So whenever you are, wherever you are, whatever, is, whatever variation is fun for you. One more big breath in, getting that left leg and that right leg really warm. Okay, with your exhale, we're dropping that right leg out behind. So we're dropping the right toe, drop the right knee. I wanna bring you into a pigeon posture from here. So your left leg is in front of you as the bent knee. We're going to walk the left foot to the right and drop the left knee to the floor. So setting up for a pigeon posture. And try to stay up right here for a little while. Sometimes we want to just come down right away. But in your pigeon posture, use your hands out in front of you to keep your upper body lifted so that you have time to align yourself. So check out your hips, make sure they're level with the floor. A lot of times the right hip will try to lift, okay? We need them to be level with each other. And adjust the left foot placement. If you want this to be very gentle, you can keep the foot very close to your hips. If you want this to be challenging, take it away from your hips. If you want it to be um, not necessarily challenging, uh, maybe I should say more intense in the left outer hip if you need more opening there. I don't need a whole lot of opening there, so I'm going to keep the foot close. So come on down. Start to walk your elbows out now that you're aligned. Now come on down. Hmm. So we'll take five or six long, slow breaths right here in pigeon posture. And I'll give you some things to think about. First of all, can we do just the minimum amount of work here? Let's just figure out how much work do we actually need to do to get the maximum benefits from this posture? Not a whole lot, but put a little activity in your legs. Resist the floor slightly, like you're pushing it away with your legs. And then strengthen your legs, especially your glutes. You're really working your glutes here, but not too much, just enough, okay? Notice when you activate your legs just a little bit, how it may give you more freedom to release in the hips and the low back. All right, pigeon posture is such a great time to just check in and notice how you feel. <laughs> How's your practice working for you today? What effects do you feel from your practice? As you are ready, come on up from your pigeon posture. And I want to give you something to kind of play with and think about here. So feel free to just stay here, um, take breaks if you need them. But if you could bend that right knee, then point that toe at the ceiling. Try this. Try reaching your left hand behind you and grabbing your, your foot, okay? It might work today. Today you might just be reaching, and that's good too. But take a few breaths here. If you have the foot, maybe you could pull it in a little closer to your, uh, your hip, okay? 
So that would give you a nice quad release there too. Okay, just play around here. Maybe one more breath in. And then we'll let that go. Come all the way up and out of pigeon posture. Okay, so tuck your back toes. Press yourself all the way up. Let's take a downward facing dog here. So the left foot back to join the right. Just pedal it out, walk it out. Okay, maybe take a few spiny, spinal, spinal waves here. I call, I call it wavy down dog. You're thinking of rolling your spine forward through a kind of a rounded plank spine. And then when you press back to your down dog, you can bend your knees and extend and arch your spine as you roll back. So try it a few more times. Think of waving the whole length of your body from your toes to your nose. Remember to breathe. Okay, maybe one more time. Come on back to downward facing dog. And from here, walk your feet to your hands. Try this, try coming up on your tiptoes and see how long you can tiptoe to your hands. <laughs> All right. All right. From here, grounding into your right foot, let's get the left leg up and out behind. So let's do this on the other side. A standing split. So don't let the word split scare you. It's just a little, just a little balance on that right leg. So remember, you can bend the right knee a lot or a little, but both legs are strong. The left leg is really long and you're tucking the hip under of the left leg. So you might just hang out here, let your head hang, shake out your neck. Or you can experiment with taking one or two hands to that right ankle. Okay, I like the fingertip method. Sometimes all you really need is a single fingertip on the ground just to get you balanced. And then you can fly. And remember to breathe and not take it too seriously. Okay. Relax your shoulders. All right, maybe one more big breath. Make a really strong shape here in your standing split. And we're coming down to a pigeon posture. So drop that left toe to the ground behind you. Drop that left knee. And we'll shimmy the right foot to the left. Drop the right knee. Pigeon posture. So stay up, align your hips, level them off at the ground. Okay, make sure that left hip is internally rotating so the top of the left foot is on the floor. And then maybe you walk the foot out away from your hips, maybe close in, but come on down when you're aligned. And remember to give some gentle resistance against the floor and some strength in the glutes. And we'll take five or six long, slow breaths here. Just doing the minimal amount of effort, nothing more. Sometimes I find if I come into a posture like this very passively, it's really hard to find any kind of release in the hips and low back. But if, but if I just put a little bit of strength into it, a little resistance, there's a lot more release. And that's the best way, the most effective way to lengthen muscles. We call it eccentric contraction. It's contracting and lengthening at the same time. Okay, take your time, pigeon people, coming back up. Now you can hang out here in this upright pigeon, and this is actually just a really nice place to be if you wanna practice just being upright in your pigeon. But if you wanna practice that funny little uh, bind, you can bend that left knee and then reach the right hand behind and see if it works today. It might not, and that's okay. 
Okay, if it works, you can get that quad stretch. Okay, you can roll toward the inside, the outside's nice. Also, we get a nice twist out of this in the upper body. One more big breath in right here. And we're letting it go, come on back. So hand down in front, the um, right hand down, left toes tuck. Let's bring it up and back to another downward facing dog. I'll take a few breaths here. Okay, from here, I have kind of a funky challenge for you. Gonna get a really nice and open in your upper body. So could you very gracefully and slowly bring your right elbow down to touch the mat? And then just as gracefully and slowly pick it up. Okay, let's try the left. Slow down with the left elbow and slow up. So let's, can we do that a few more times? Just slowly down with the right and then the left. Keep switching sides. And then once it becomes more familiar and you've felt it a few times, try to do it as isolatively as possible. So try to not let your hips wiggle. It's challenging. And then if one is great for you, keep doing one. If you want to do two at a time, do two down and two up. Okay, you're really going to need to grip the mat here. Give the mat a really strong tiger claw grip. Okay, and so whether you're doing one or two, come on down to two elbows, some kind of way, come on down. The elbows are gonna be shoulder width and you're gonna have a really nice grip in your hands. Go ahead and push your hips toward the back of the mat and nice breath into your shoulders and your upper body here in dolphin posture. So dolphin posture, uh, it's kind of a lot of work for your upper body. So if you need a break, just drop your knees and see if you could keep that nice opening feeling in your shoulders. When you have the knees up, you're actually really strengthening and stretching the shoulders at the same time, which is an eccentric contraction, our favorite kind of stretch. If you want more, if you're challenging yourself today, lift that right leg up and out behind you. Okay, you can point flex or floint the foot, whatever, but Big breath into the back of that left leg. Hold and breathe. So we're bringing a lot of spaciousness. We're trying to take up a whole lot of space in this posture. Strong shoulders pushing down. If you have a leg up, switch sides. Otherwise, hold strong and breathe wherever you are. Okay, if you have a leg up, breathe into the back of that right leg. Okay, if you have a leg up, all feet down. Okay, wherever you are, drop your knees. Take the knees, maybe hip width, okay? Just hip width with your knees. And then see if you could kind of install your hips over your knees so they don't move forward or back. From there, reach out your hands and drop your chin to the floor. So take some really big breath into your chest and shoulders here. And remember, if it's too much, just move your shoulders forward and kind of drop your head. You can move your knees forward and turn this into more of a uh, elbows and knees kind of position, okay? So that's a way out if it's too much. But if you really like this chest opening and this big heart opening feeling, make claw hands. So push down just into your fingertips with claw hands. And then think of looking at your hands. You can lift your elbows, you can lift your uh, armpits out in a way, but do keep a really long neck, okay? And it's possible that your throat might come to the floor, but don't force it, okay? So this is a really useful posture for us humans in 2020 because no matter where you are, even if you're just resting your forehead on the floor, you're getting a huge opening across your chest and throat and shoulders, which is where we collect so much of our stuff. 
So take maybe three more big breaths into your upper body, making big armpits. All right, that always feels so nice to open up the chest and the heart. So come out, take your time, walking your hands back up and in. Sit your hips to the side. Come on down to a seat. Okay, take your legs nice and wide here. And they don't have to be super crazy wide, um, just something that feels nice and gives you a sense of release across the inside and the backs of your legs. Also keep in mind, if it's really hard to sit up straight, if you feel like you have to lean back especially, just put a little bend in your knees, okay? Try that, it's really, it makes it a lot easier to sit up straight and kind of loose in the shoulders. All right, so wherever you are, do activate your legs. We want them strong and long, okay? I like that analogy here of pushing out through the bones but pulling back through the muscles. Reach your arms up. So taking a big breath in here, imagine you're grabbing an imaginary trapeze with a long giraffe neck. Exhale and move your trapeze bar over to the left without lifting your right hip. Inhale and bring it up through center. And we'll do the other side. Exhale, move your trapeze bar to the right. And inhale, bring it up through center. Okay, so keep going just like this. You're just gonna go side to side. The trickiest thing here, perhaps, might be just not lifting your hips. Even if you feel like it limits your range of motion uh, to keep your hip down, do it anyway. All right, really nice side bending, great release for the whole spine and low back. Next time you come out to the right, let's meet there. So come on out to the right and pause. You can start just by dropping your right elbow onto your right thigh and getting a little bit more comfortable. Okay. <laughs> okay, make sure your left hip is grounded and then make a lot of space around your head and your neck. Like you're trying to hold a yoga ball, okay? And you don't want your shoulders to be by your ears. Reach over to the left. Okay, think of lengthening your neck out in that direction, grounding that left hip. Maybe you want a little more here. You can bring your right elbow to the floor and you can actually really peel your chest open to the ceiling here. So keep breathing. Take some more time here. Okay, one final option is now that we've been here for a few breaths, we've been here for a while, see if you could slide your right hand over to your left hip. Now really keep your spine long on all sides. Do your uh, left fingers maybe want to touch your right toes, okay? It might happen and it might not, and it's different on the day. So just have a good time reaching, maybe one more big breath in, and start to use those left fingers to press yourself up. We're gonna go through to the other side. So inhale here, reach up, grab your trapeze and exhale over to the left. Ground the right hip and pause. We can start with left elbow on the left thigh. Okay, start to inflate your chest here, start to lengthen your neck absurdly and push down into that right hip. This might be where you'd like to stay. Maybe the left elbow on the floor gives you a little more uh, torque, perhaps, <laughs> to open up your chest to the ceiling. Okay, keep breathing into that right side. Great opening. Maybe we deepen this, okay, after a few breaths by reaching the left hand for the right hip, pushing that right hip down. And maybe the right fingers wanna tickle the left toes.
Maybe one more big breath and this great side opener. And then come up and out. We can use the right fingers to press up here. Okay, one more thing. Since we're here, we've opened up the legs quite nicely. Let's reactivate them if they got um, stiff or if they got um, sleepy. Okay, strong legs pulling inward toward the center. Take your fingers out front if that's good. If that's not good, you can lean back. You can bend your knees. Maybe take your knees uh, bent and walk your fingers out front. Okay, see if you could fold forward. So try bending the knees. If you don't need to bend your knees, awesome. Either way is great, but start to drop your torso toward the ground. And keep a long spine. So you're, you're gonna round your spine, but as you're rounding, you're doing your best to lengthen. Your forehead might come down, wherever you are. Big breath. And keep the gentle resistance of the legs against the floor. So keep pushing the floor down. Don't let up on that. Okay, take your time coming up and out of your forward fold. Walking your hands back up by your hips. All right, lean back on your hands and you can, I like to pick up my legs because they're pretty noodly by now. So one hand under each knee, you can pick up your legs and bring them back together. All right. Let's just take a few windshield wipers here just to, just to shake that off. So we did some great heart and shoulder opening today. We did some great hip, hip opening, some split preparation. Excellent work. From here, uh, next time your knees point up, just pause there. Tuck your hands underneath your hips and then see if you can just rock down onto your elbows. So elbows would be underneath your shoulders. Okay, use your shoulder blades to scoop up your heart here. So you wanna think of your two shoulder blade plates coming together and pushing your heart up to the ceiling. And we wanna keep a tuck in the chin. So imagine that you don't want any creases in the back of your neck. <laughs> so try to keep the creases out of the back of your neck as you maybe start to look up and you maybe start to look behind you, nose. Just keep breathing. Don't let your shoulders come up and choke you. Keep lifting that heart. Maybe one more big breath into your big chest here. And we're letting it go. So tuck your chin back up and in. Let's see if we can just move one elbow at a time and roll all the way down. And come on down. All right, this is the culmination of our practice right here. We have arrived at our resting time. And this is the whole point of everything we just did. <laughs> so that we can 100% completely relax and let go right here right now. And you might lengthen your arms and legs into a shavasana or something else might be more appropriate today. Either way. Kind of opposite from when we started this practice and we kind of harnessed the breath and we intentionally lengthened it and intentionally slowed it down. Let's let go all control over the breath now and just let it run wild. Just see what happens. Notice the difference between the breath you came in with and the breath you're leaving with. Through your nose if you can. 
And then let's do with the body something similar. Let's completely let go of all effort here. There's no activation in the body. There's no effort. No sense of doing whatsoever. Allow all of your cells to become diffuse and just evaporate into a cloud. And with your mind as well, just let go of all control over the thoughts. What's the use in trying to control something like a mind? Sit back and observe the mind the way you watch clouds or birds or people you love. Allow yourself to just lay and be and observe this moment in detail, with intensity, and be present. What a wonderful luxury that we can just be present in this lovely moment. Notice everything you hear. The clock ticking, your friends moving, cars, your breath. Notice everything you feel. Your fingers against each other, the floor. Please continue to rest and just be in this moment for as long as you can. This is where I'll leave you this evening. Keep resting. Thanks so much for joining me.